game. And these stats are slightly different. If I were to pick a male, they'd have higher strength and vitality, but lower agility and intelligence, and vice versa for the female. Lower strength and vitality, higher agility and intelligence. But it's mostly the equipment. Uh, the personalities also vary, but there's only one major one, which we're not going to worry about. Uh, I'm going to be going with the solitary personality for safety, and I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, I will be ready to start uh, whenever I press enter. So, whoever is ready on the timer... I will start in three, two, one, go. So now at the beginning of the game here, this is the personality test, which will determine your hero's personality. And essentially, you want a personality with high vitality and decent strength and uh, also balanced other stats. So I'm going to be pressing no on most of these questions. I can hit no to all of them and still end up in the same scenario, but there's certain ones uh, that'll come up that I will say yes to. It's namely one specific one, and it's this one when someone is conned. I hit yes, this will throw me into a specific scenario. Now, I do have my estimate at 7.30. Uh, I will be implementing some safety strats later on. And this one, we talk to this guy. He says he's engaged, and then we talk to the person he's engaged to, Pawnee, who's up here. And we go back to him and tell him, no, she's not going to honor the engagement. This will give me the solitary personality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of, yep, it forces you to do a personality test. And so now I have the solitary personality. And, uh, there's a lot of personalities in this game, all with different stat spreads. So there's five major stats in the game. There is strength, which increases your potential damage output. Usually your damage is a range based on your weapon, as well as your strength value. And usually it ranges about 5 points in damage early on, and then I'm not sure how high the ranges go later on in the game. I haven't done extensive research in that. There is agility, and agility will affect your turn order. Although, you're not... There's some sort of weird rolling because it uses the original 255 uh, setup for uh, bits and... I forget the terminology. Either way, stats are limited to up to 255 at their maximum. And even if you're at maximum agility... There's still a chance certain bosses will outspeed you. So uh, now we are going in to meet the king. He will give us gear and tell us to go get party members, but I'm going to pick up a luck seed first. And uh, as I said, agility will determine your turn order. It'll also increase your defense every so many points. And then Vitality, which will determine how high your health rolls in the game. Uh, yes, Dragon Warrior 3 is also called Dragon Quest 3. The Seeds of Salvation. So all the Dragon Warrior games are Dragon Quest games. They do get renamed later on. And then uh, the fourth stat is Intelligence which will determine your MP growth, or magic power growth, or magic point growth, depending on what you want to call it. 
<laughs> and then the fifth stat is luck, which determines how often you're hit by status effects. And it's not as important as other stats, but it can be relevant. And uh, now what I am doing, although I don't take any characters with me on a trip, I do have to make a dealer to later escort and drop them off to start a town for me, which is required for an orb, which is required to progress the storyline. <clears throat> so I just quickly make a dealer here. And now I'm done here. And now... I'll be picking up a couple more items and then stopping at shops to pick up some more items. So I pick up an herb here. And I will be going upstairs to pick up five gold. And then I will be going to the art, uh, weapons and armor shop. Now, I will be using the strength seed I got at the beginning, but I will not use the luck seed. I will actually sell it for money. I got a plus three, which is good. Uh, I have 14 strength. And now, even if I have a strength personality and not the one I currently have, uh... The highest strength you can kind of roll at the beginning is somewhere between like 15 and 18 if you get lucky on the strength seed. Uh, 14 is actually really good for me because that'll help guarantee killing certain monsters that I would normally have trouble with at level 1. Now the version difference between this one and the original, uh, normally you'd have something like 40 health at the beginning of the game. Whereas the maximum, even with the highest health personality, which is uh, that you can obtain, which is called the tough pers personality, uh, it would take about 20 to 40 minutes of pushing a boulder in this to get the health, the tough personality. But I don't opt for that one because of the time it takes to get there. And even if I do, the most I'll have is like up to 20. Or, like, maybe 25 might be the maximum. I'm not sure. And, uh, yeah, it, it's very awkward. You, you get, like, half, if not less than half of the health you would get in the original. You actually have to route things slightly differently. Now, I haven't actually played the original of Dragon uh, Warrior 3, so I'm not sure about some of the other, um, some of the other differences. Also, as far as I know, criticals are, like, completely random based on character class and weapon type. I don't know why I just got two crits in a row. It doesn't make any sense to me. I've yet to figure out how the heck criticals actually work in this game. So I am going to be trying to change it to nighttime, as well as picking up items called tiny metals. Tiny metals are a collectible in this game. There are 110 in the game, but for this run's purposes, I only need five at the beginning of the game to get an early weapon called the spiny whip. Now, the originals don't have as big of a gear selection as this version, and this version introduces a lot of different weapons and armors. And whips and boomerangs have a bigger variety in this game than the original. So that would be another version difference. There also is at least one unique glitch to this game that I know of, but it, for the run purposes, I won't be attempting it.
I'm going to use one of my herbs to heal quick. <clears throat> and I will be trying to get somewhere between level 3 and 4 at the moment. Uh, I do have to go and pick up a quest item called the Thief's Key. There are doors in this game and three different keys in the game which will open different types of doors. So you can open the normal gray doors at the beginning of the game. The Thief's Key will open you red colored doors. The Magic Key will open silver colored doors. And then the final key will open up chain link jail cell, cell style doors. Um, I don't know about the enemy animation. I think they're kind of interesting though. This is the Game Boy Color version. So I just learned my first spell of the game, which is Blaze. And the important spells in this game are actually going to be Heal, which I should learn in one more level. Maybe two if I'm unlucky with stat rolls. And then another one is Heal All, which I learn at level 34 which will be much later in the run during a 1 hour and 45 minute level grind. Actually getting very good enemy rolls here. So at the beginning here, there's a bunch of different enemies you can get. Slimes, Ravens, Anteaters, Horny Hairs in this specific spot. And what I try to go for are the Horny Hairs because I can typically one-shot them and they give a fairly good uh, experience value. Actually, have notes for this game, and I forgot to open them up, so I'm actually going to do that now. I have them on the side. Also, it is almost nighttime, and I'll be heading back to the main city that you, the first city you start in. And the reason I need it to be nighttime is because there is a house that you are unable to access during daytime. There are time specific events in this game where it either has to be nighttime or daytime, as the towns and cities will, or the towns and castles, I should say, will change their layout, where their people are, what their people are doing, certain people will be asleep. Others will be awake at night. So now it is nighttime. The music also changes. The shopkeepers go to bed. The innkeepers are still up. This house is now open because they went upstairs. I picked the wrong dresser. There is a tiny metal here that I need to pick up. So this is number two of five. The next one is in the tower, which I'll be going to next. The two after that are hidden in the castle. One is only available via the thief key. One is available now. It takes a little bit to get to. So I pick it up after I get the thief key. So now I'll be heading into the first dungeon of the game. Uh, but I wouldn't call it a major dungeon. The next major dungeon, or the first major dungeon, comes up after I get the thief's key. And so, uh, after I get through all these fights, <laughs> I'll head into the dungeon. And at the top of the tower, I believe it's called the Tower of Najima, we'll have a guy taking a nap that we wake up to take the Thief's Key from. Well, he gives it to us. Actually asked if we'll take it from him. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Also going to try and finish my meal while I play. I just got a free herb, which is really good. So we are now in the bottom level of the tower, technically. <clears throat> Uh, 
And eventually I will start running away from certain fights that might take too long to do. Like, I might have wanted to run away from this one because Frogors take two hits to kill. But I th think I might as well just take the experience here. Normally, I'm not able to one-shot Anteaters, but I got a really good uh, strength roll. But this one I'm going to run from because uh, you can either A, have the monsters be stunned, or B, get stunned by the monsters and ambushed. If I have the monster stunned, it is a free runaway. And I'm going to try and avoid Frog Wars. So now we're on the technical first floor of the tower, where the music changes and the aesthetic actually looks like the tower. We're going to the top of this tower to get the Thief's Key, but first, on the second floor, I need to pick up a tiny metal. And uh, let me know if anybody has any questions about the run. At any point. <clears throat> now, for this game, I am technically using an emulator. I am using MGBA to play this. But, uh, I would originally play this on either Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SP. And then eventually I would just prefer to play it on the Game Boy Advance SP because I liked having the light available. <clears throat> Nowadays it's much easier to use an emulator to stream it because uh, getting a capture card for the older systems is very difficult. At least in my point of view, it is. It's either difficult or possibly expensive. Plus, you kind of... I think you have to weld stuff and... Hey, uh, so I ended up learning heal late. I just got it at level 5. Uh, now that I have heal, I can actually just heal myself on the go instead of relying on herbs. Oh hey, we have finally run into one of my least favorite early enemies in the game, Butterflies. Uh, these things have a spell called Surround, which will make your character have Fog status, which means your hit rate is kind of cut in half. It's very weird and very annoying. But uh, we have made it to the sleeping guy, the top of the tower, and we will take the thief key from him. He mentions books that can change personalities. The reason being, there is a book on this shelf, which we'll pick up to sell later for money. And, uh, we're just gonna jump off this tower now. And go back in. And go back down. We're gonna go back up. If you notice, there was a red door that we passed by up here. Which has two treasure chests behind it. Not extremely important but also very important at the same time there is a agility stat boosting steed as well as one piece of armor called the fur hat in here and the fur hat actually adds a decent amount of defense early on that the first major dungeon i will take one or two damage from most enemies compared to three to say seven if i didn't have it on depending on what my agility value is and i will most definitely be picking these up <laughs> trying to take a drink and put my back around the button Right. 
agility scene. Or wait, it's not the fur hat, it's a wooden hat. The fur hat's later, my apologies. <laughs> Sometimes can't even remember the own items in this game. I will be using the agility seed and putting on the hat. Sadly, I only got a plus one to agility. Now, later on, any agility points I get will be practically doubled. There is a item called the Starry Bracelet or Starry Bracer. Uh, in other versions, it's called the Meteorite Armband, and it practically just doubles agility points in any of the Dragon Quest games that has been featured in. It is very, very good, and very important to this run, because without it, Solo Hero would be a lot more difficult. Just doubling agility not only lets you go first more often, uh, it increases your defense by quite a bit. Alright, I'm almost done in here. I am actually heading to the castle basement right now. Uh, don't know what just happened to my arrow keys. Okay, anyways, once I'm done with this encounter, I should be able to go up the stairs above me, which leads into the castle basement. But uh, normally the castle basement is locked by the thief key, so you can't use it to enter this area. You can only really use it to exit after you get the thief key, which is uh, fortunate because uh, it just leads right into an area right across from the tiny metals I need here. So one tiny metal is over here locked by the thief key. And this stressor. So this is number four in the run. And then down here to the right, there's an exit to the castle, but also an antidote and tiny metal number five. I will be picking both of them up. Now what antidotes do is they cure poison in this game. And poison is a status effect that not only affects you in, uh, it doesn't really do much in battle, but when on the main screen will act kind of like Pokemon poison, and uh, it'll just keep draining your health every few steps. And now we're going down a well. In the wells you can find different things in this game. And this is where we turn in tiny metals. <clears throat> And this is where we'll pick up our first major weapon of the game, the Spiny Whip, which will allow us to hit groups of enemies rather than single enemies. And I will go ahead and equip it. And the Warp Wing we bought earlier, I will use to go to Reeve. And now... We're going to pick up a very strange item to let a 16-year-old have. Uh, after getting a stat seed here. And getting an item here. This guy here says he locked up tight. And uh, for some reason, he gives us a magic bomb. Not something you should give a 16-year-old ever. Or, like, anyone ever. But this is actually very important, because we need it to progress to the next major area of the game. And to access the first major dungeon. I am re-entering here. I'm going to use the in-click to refill both my health and my magic points. <clears throat> And I am also going to try and farm some enemies before going to the dungeon, which is a safety strategy I implemented, so I try not to die in the dungeon. Uh, Babbles are excellent for XP. They do, however, have the chance to poison if they get to attack me, which they didn't this time. 
So uh, level six, pretty good beginning. Now I am getting kind of low health rules at the moment. But at the very least, I'm getting very good encounters and high strength rolls. Which is strange because I have the correct personality. I should be getting slightly higher vit rolls than I currently am and less strength. But uh, that's RNG for you. You never really know what it's going to do. And uh, as you notice with the spiny whip, instead of the sword, I'm hitting groups of enemies. Which is going to make fights a lot faster. Now what I'm looking for here is either the babble fights, like this one that I keep getting for some reason. Honestly, I don't get them this often. And another enemy called a sting wasp in large numbers. And the Sting Wasp uh, has a little more HP than the Babel, a little less XP, but it has a special ability that allows it to call a uh, ally into the fight, which happens to be other Sting Wasp. Later on, there's different monsters that can call different types of allies, some of which we won't fight at all, one of which is a backup strategy to gaining levels. And uh, I actually had to do that backup strategy in RRFTP because I ended up dying to one of the bosses, which sent me back a half hour. And because of that fight, I actually increased my estimate because I went over estimate. I will be trying to stick to estimate this time, though. I notice we, uh, our, our lat 7 has been ahead of schedule, and now I will actually go into the dungeon, since I am level 7. <clears throat> and hopefully these early levels will help me get ahead. I'm going to use the int seed I had picked up, and now here's where we use the bomb. That's literally just to open this wall. I will not need any more tiny metals for the rest of the run. I could potentially get 10 tiny metals to get a usable accessory uh, called the garter, which is a female-only accessory that raises defense. Uh... It also changes the personality from solitary to sexy, and the sexy personality has a pretty good stat spread. But, uh, for the most part, I don't really need it. Because I usually have enough stats to deal with things. Okay, now these enemies, these are called magicians. And they can cast blaze, which can do upwards of 11 or 12 damage. But these things give really good XP, and I try to take Magician fights if I can. Uh, sometimes in the past, though, when I've had four Magicians in a fight, it's actually cost me a start of a run. So I will definitely tr be trying to be careful around these things. Uh, very... Strangely, I'm getting more magicians than I usually see, too. And, uh, these fights I try to run away from. So, the enemy there that I highlighted was the Almirage. They have the spell Sleep. And, uh, if you get slept by an Almirage, there's a chance you end up in what I call a sleep lock, where if they cast sleep every single turn, or they cast sleep every turn you wake up, I should say, uh, there's a chance for you to fall back asleep. So normally, if you are asleep, they will not cast sleep. But if you are awake every turn, they have some chance to cast sleep again. So you can literally wake up and then be put right back to sleep. 
And because of this, you can end up in a near-infinite loop, which inevitably results in your character dying. I've had it happen several times. I hate owl mirages with a passion. And uh, I'm hoping it doesn't happen in this run. There's also another enemy a bit later when I go for the magic key called a King Toad, which can also do the same thing by putting you in a sleep lock. Now, if there's only one in a fight and I move first, I should be able to one shot them currently, which I just did, which is good. Also, if there is only one in a fight, I'm less likely to end up in a sleep lock. Uh, two, it's not that bad, but three or more is can be really bad. Because any one of them can use sleep when you wake up. Uh, we are about now maybe halfway through this dungeon. And uh, because this is solo hero, I try to take as many good encounters as possible to get my level up early on. So I'm actually already level 8, which is really good. I am ahead of where I normally would be. I am going to make a side stop here to pick up a weapon, which I will be selling to the store later on for a good amount of money to pick up new gear. Um... I can't really think of anything else to say about the run right now, but uh, I can talk about myself as a runner. Uh, I do this run. I do a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories speedruns, so uh, I do a lot of 15 card mod. Uh, there is a new randomizer league that I've started with, which is 15 card mod plus randomized drops. A set ban list on certain cards to prevent them from dropping. As well as, uh... Just a whole bunch of different settings they've added. I might die here, this is not good. I got very lucky. I need to heal. That could have been bad, I could have been reset to... Not only lose half my gold... But I would have been sent back to the starting town and had to walk back to the dungeon and walk the whole way back through. Thankfully I survived that because I am now out of the dungeon. And we have reached Romilly. And now... Uh, we will be picking up some items along the way. There's a tiny metal in one of those pots that I don't need. A leather hat here I will sell for money. There's some items in here. Namely, a personality book in the middle shelf. An accessory in here that changes your personality. And gives you, I think, vitality when you equip it. I won't be equipping it. And I will be going into the castle to talk to the king to set a save point and respawn point as well as start a quest to find his crown. Which we don't have to get the crown to, uh, to do anything with it, but we do have to beat the villain that has taken the crown. To continue the main quest, which we will do much later on. Welcome in, Raiders. Hello, Moonblaze Wolf. You have made it in time for the Dragon Warrior 3 run. I'm still relatively early in this run. I'm now going upstairs to pick up a couple items. 
a token, which is used to play Pachisi, which I've actually changed my routing uh, since the last time I ran this, which was at RRFTP. Uh, I no longer have the Pachisi board in the run because I have found slightly better ways to make the money I need to get through certain sections. And, uh... Sadly, no Pachisi. I'm going to stop at the end quick. Now I will walk to the next town. <clears throat> So, for those just joining in, this is Dragon Warrior 3 for the Game Boy Color. It is an old RPG uh, that used to be on the uh, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo systems, as well as remakes for the Game Boy Color, which you see here, and the Wii Virtual Console. And there's supposed to be a 2.5D remake eventually coming out, but, uh... I have no idea on the status of that. It got announced uh, a couple years ago and just hasn't really had any updates in the longest time. Uh, I'm hoping that comes out sometime within the next year or two. Because I would love to play it. I am going to be taking and avoiding certain fights as I progress through here. Uh, this fight might have been a bad idea. I'm going to try and heal here and hopefully not take too much damage. Uh, this is bad. I'm gonna have to try and run. Unfortunately, I'm probably taking a death here and losing half my money, which is really bad. I might not have enough money to afford the gear I need now. <sighs> Sadly, that's a few minute time lost to walk back there, as well as the unfortunate loss of money. Sadly, there are times like this before I get certain items that could just end up with me dying. Especially when I go to try and get the magic key, there's a chance I die several times trying to get it. And here's one of the issues with Almirages is when they cast sleep in unfortunate circumstances. Thankfully, the magicians aren't using blaze constantly. I say that and one immediately uses blaze again. <laughs> right to heal. And uh, as I'm walking, I try to stay as close to max HP as possible without using a bunch of MP. Venom Toad fights I'll pretty much always take, but there is a chance of poison anytime I fight these. So they have this little spew attack that they do. They have two different attacks. They have the jump tongue attack and the spew attack. Spew attack poisons, as you can see. The jump attack just does damage. So uh, I will be using one of my antidotes. And uh, hopefully I don't run out of antidotes and get poisoned again because I'm gonna have to buy more antidotes if that happens. This fight I'm definitely not taking. Pokemon Seto Box.
Okay, I managed to safely play. Alright, this is the town of Kasav, where we will be picking up a shield from this shop. Which I would have had enough to buy if I hadn't died. So instead, we'll be selling some items to afford it. I'll sell the knife and the copper sword. And I'll now buy a shield here. So we'll improve my defense a fair bit. And now I'm going to pick up some other items here. Token here, which I'll sell for money later. As well as a stat boosting item in here. Wrong barrel. Now, life acorns and stat items uh, and mystic nuts. So, life acorns boost your HP anywhere from 1 to 5 points. Mystic nuts boost your MP from anywhere from 1 to 5 points. And other stat items will boost certain stats by 1 to 3 points. Now, the reason I took a female character was also part of this item. The fur hat cannot be equipped by male characters. Uh, this fight I will be running away from. Rogue Knights are basically deadly enemies, and Mad Ravens are very strong and hard to fight. Uh, if I were to try and fight those, I would most certainly die to the damage output that they do. Now we're going to another town. Uh, I'm going to try and take this. Shadowers are weird. They copy the stats of another enemy. Uh, this is Noah Neal's, the Sleeping Town. It is under a curse from the nearby elves because a boy... From this town, eloped with an elven girl, specifically the daughter of the Queen of the Elves, or leader of the Elves. And uh, because of this, uh, they placed a curse on this town to make it fall asleep. And it's been asleep for a very long time.